Your dream of becoming a developer may already be dying without you even realizing it. Every day, hundreds, if not thousands of junior developers are out there struggling and fighting and trying to make their dreams a reality when, in fact, even though their effort is high, their dreams are about to die. See, the problem is they don't realize that in all of that effort and all of that work, they're actually letting in these little silent dream killers. Today, I want to warn you about three silent dream killers and how you can protect yourself and your dream of becoming a developer. Hey, Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. Some of you watching this may already feel like your dream has been killed, and maybe you've been able to figure out what are some of the things that have caused that to happen. And if you got past those dream killers, leave a comment below and let us know how you were able to rekindle the flames of your dream. Now, the reality is that we all have dreams and, and we all know that there's lots of things that that can hurt our dreams, especially junior developers. As you're just getting started, you know that if you if you don't put in the effort, if you don't actually work, you're not going to be able to reach your dream. You're not going to be able to reach those goals that you have for becoming a developer. But sometimes there's things that you don't really think about. In fact, sometimes there's things that everyone seems to be doing. But in reality, instead of helping you build to your dream, it's actually pulling you back. It's making it harder for you to achieve your goals. So let's take a look at these three silent dream killers. One of the worst things a developer can say is, man, it shouldn't be that hard. In fact, I was just joking about this with a client here recently, and one of them actually has a hat that says it shouldn't be that hard or something similar to that statement. The idea is, hey, whatever you're asking, I should be able to take care of that pretty easily. In fact, that's a very common assumption of most developers. Once we've been doing development for a while, especially senior developers, we kind of hear from the client the things that they want to accomplish. And, and it seems to make sense to us. We have a good idea of how we might go about accomplishing that. And those dangerous words pop out and they say, that shouldn't be too hard. And inevitably, in the back of our minds, we hear the dun, 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 because that is the sound of death. See, we often make the mistake of assuming that everything's going to be a whole lot easier than it actually is going to be. And especially if you've been doing this for a long time, you begin to think that pretty much everything's going to be easier than it actually ends up being. And so the first silent dream killer is unrealistic plans. What does this look like for junior developers? Well, first of all, it looks like focusing on learning lots of things rather than focusing on one very specific thing and really digging down and understanding it completely. See, there's this tendency for junior developers to pursue learning in quantity or lots of things rather than pursuing quality of learning. Oftentimes you see junior devs jumping from one thing to another to another and they're really not grasping everything or how all those things really fit together. They're just moving on from one shiny object to another. Another type of unrealistic planning is simply overestimating how much time you're going to actually have available to you to pursue something that you're learning. A lot of junior devs find themselves staying up late at night or find themselves burning the midnight oil or working on the weekends or or trying to find every waking moment they can to try to learn these things because they don't understand what it's really going to take out of the gate to learn these new concepts. They think it's going to be easier than it is. And honestly, a lot of that's on a lot of the, the content creators out here telling us that it's pretty easy. They give us tutorials and things like that and make it look easy. But the reality is most of the things that you have to learn as a developer are going to take time. And unfortunately, a lot of junior developers don't really think about how much time it's going to take. They don't really plan to have enough time for them to learn these things. And so they feel stressed out because they feel like they're not accomplishing what they should be accomplishing with the time that they've given themselves. Another way unrealistic planning comes into play is by taking shortcuts. And I just mentioned this in another video recently, but oftentimes we, we take the shortcuts to learning and we don't dig down and learn the fundamentals. We don't really ground ourselves in what we're trying to learn. We just, we just want the quick answers and, and that's going to hurt us in the long run. How do we make sure we have good plans, good goals that are going to help us progress on our journey, on our goal, on our dream of becoming a developer? First of all, I would say focus on setting goals and plans that help you learn one thing at a time. Don't try to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 
all at the same time. Don't even try to learn them right away back to back. Spend the time and get to know HTML really well. Then spend the time and get to know CSS and then JavaScript, or maybe you're back in dev and you're learning Java or you're learning PHP. Spend the time to really feel like you are good, to feel like you can do everything that you want to do with that coding language before you move on to a framework or before you move on to another coding language. Because what you're really doing there is you're focusing on, on learning the depth of that language, on learning the depth of that framework, on learning the depth of whatever it is that you're learning. You're focusing on digging in and really understanding how it works and why it works and the best practices and, and all these things that are not shortcuts. They're going to take time. And when you really are focusing on the depth, you know that that's going to take longer than just a, a 12 week or a 16 week or a 32 week uh, boot camp. You know it's going to take longer than that because you don't want a surface level education. You want to get really good. So how do you do that? The best way to do that, you will find this all over the place. This is not new with me. The best way to do that is to build a real project. And to do that, you have to plan it out. You have to decide what do I need to learn? What do I, what do I want to put into this project? What technology do I want to want to learn? And what is that actually going to look like? What is a reasonable time frame for me to build this project out? But most importantly, as you're making these goals, you need to write them down. You need to write your goals down so that you can go back later and cross them off when you've accomplished them. Because one of the most important things you can do with your goals is not just plan them well but mark them off and recognize when you have succeeded because it's that recognition of success that's going to help you move forward. But if you're just sitting there and you don't really have any goals, you don't really have any good plan, sometimes junior devs just follow whatever tutorial and they're just going over and over all kinds of different tutorials and other people's ideas and plans. You need to build your journey and your plan and know what your end goal is and then backtrack that and create steps, create a plan that is reasonable, that makes sense. Ask other senior devs to take a look at your plan and, and because you should write it out, ask senior devs to take a look at the plan and give you feedback on whether that's reasonable or not, whether the time that you have available to you throughout the day or the evening or the weekend or whatever time you have available, whether that's a reasonable amount of time in the time frame that you're giving yourself, you need to get feedback on a written plan of what you're going to do. So don't just have this nebulous plan out here that I want to have, I want to be a, 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 a junior developer in a job in X number of months. That's not going to cut it. You need to plan much more specifically and you need to get somebody else to speak into that to help you understand what really, what it's really going to take in order to do that. Hey, if you find this content interesting, would you click the like button for me? It just helps me get it out to more people who might find it interesting as well. Years ago, in my first um, real dev job, I uh, I had been there for for a couple of years, and I had kind of moved up a little bit uh, and and become actually a lead at one point. And we had several projects that were going on, and we'd actually gone through some layoffs. I was the only um, developer there that did the things that I was doing, and uh, and I had a project, a couple projects that I was taking care of. And a lot of times, I would come into the office early. I'd be there around seven o'clock in the morning and then I would go home around three 30 because the traffic was better at those times for me based on where I was living and where the office was. And I, back then I had to go back, I had to actually go into the office. So unfortunately I couldn't work from home very often. Um, but I would go home and oftentimes probably three or four times a week, I would pull out my laptop when I got home and I would continue working there while I was home, while I was there with my family while I was there, um, supposedly off of work. And that brings me to the second silent dream killer. And that is unestablished boundaries. Now as a full-time developer, the boundaries that I was not setting had to do with my family and my, in my free time there in the home with my children, with my wife, even sometimes with friends and, and, and other family, extended family, where I wasn't setting the boundaries necessary. But as a junior developer, that might look a little bit different, especially if you don't have your first job yet or any job yet. You're just trying to learn code. You still need to be able to set some boundaries for those times when you're learning code. See, over and over and over again, I see 
comments on Facebook and LinkedIn and, and YouTube and all over the place of junior developers who are just working and working and working way late in, into the, into the night and it, even early in the mornings. And they're, they're working as much as they can and, and they're actually burning out. They're actually getting to the point where they, they just feel like it's all useless. And, and it's mostly because they're, they haven't set good boundaries to help protect them in all of these different areas of life. And the, and the, the learning of code is, is encroaching in these other areas of life. So setting boundaries about when you are going to work and how long you're going to work to learn is extremely important, but you also have to set boundaries around what you are learning. And I kind of mentioned this with the last point, but you need to set a boundary around the things that I'm going to learn today or the things that I'm going to learn this week or this month. I'm just going to focus on this language, or I'm just going to focus on this framework. You have to set a boundary. You need to make it clear that this is what I'm going to do. As with my situation in my family, you need to set boundaries around your socialization, around your relationships. We can become, we can become very isolated people as we dig into this world of coding and we're spending all of our time one-on-one -on -one with the computer and we can begin to isolate ourselves unintentionally most of the time from people around us who love us, who want to spend time with us. So we need to make sure that we're, we're not isolating ourselves, that we've created some boundaries around our own isolation so that it doesn't go further than it should. And this one is a hard one, but we need to set boundaries around our expectations, especially when it comes to perfectionism. One of the biggest killers of junior developers dreams is this idea that they have to get everything perfectly right. Sometimes good enough is good enough. You don't have to know everything. Yes, you should go deep. Yes, you should spend time. Yes, you should learn as much as you can. But that doesn't mean that you have to be the expert. It doesn't mean that you have to know everything about what you're trying to accomplish. It doesn't mean that everything you build has to be absolutely perfect. You're just starting out. It's okay to have some bugs. It's okay to have some things that you come back to maybe a month later or six months later or never. <laughs> so how do we create these boundaries that are going to help us pursue our dream instead of watching it die? Well, first of all, again, you need to set realistic hours for your learning. Just decide I'm only going to work on this from 8 to 10 p.m. or from 5 to 7 a.m. or whatever that actually looks like for you and your schedule. You've got to set specific times and you've got to adhere to those specific times. It's very tempting, even once we've set specific times, to just let it creep a little bit here and a little bit there. And before you know it, you're way out of bounds. You're way beyond the boundaries that you set up. So you've got to adhere to the boundaries that you create. Write out in your plan that we just talked about in the last point. Write out in your plan exactly what you're going to learn and stick to it make a boundary. Don't even, don't even look at anything else. Decide this is going to be a boundary. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to stick with this schedule time, schedule time to be with other people. The best way to avoid isolation is to create plans that you can't miss with others. So set up times, go out to the movies, go out to eat, go over to a friend's house, Invite people over to play board games. Whatever that looks like for you, spend time socializing. Plan it out. If you don't plan something, most of the time it won't happen. So spend the time and plan it out and make sure that, that you've got all of those things planned out and you are ready to go and that you cut off, that you give yourself space to, to stop working in time to get ready so that you don't have an excuse to miss that event, to miss that time to be out there with other people. Because at the end of the day, relationships are more important than learning code. You've got to have those relationships. They help keep us grounded, even as sometimes a little bit of isolationists. <laughs> we can tend to be isolationists and we can often tend to be not really people people, people. Uh, but, but that helps keep us grounded. And so you need to have those times to go out with people, whether it's family or friends, or, or even if you've got a pet, take the pet out to take the dog out to the dog park or go on a walk or set those scheduled times and stick to them. When you're working on a project, set realistic acceptance criteria, decide this is what I'm going to accept even though it's not perfect, this is what I'm going to accept as being done with my learning on this specific issue. And then more importantly, just like with the goals, 
write down your boundaries. Write down your boundaries. And then even more important than writing it down, share those boundaries with somebody else. Find somebody, whether it's a mentor, whether it's just a friend, uh, that somebody that you're going to want to have some of those uh, times with, that you're going to schedule. Find somebody to hold you accountable. Give them that list of boundaries and say, hey, if you see me you know, working past this time at night, you know, I'm up on my computer, you see me online or something like that. Give me a call, give me a text, call me out because you need accountability. That's part of what, what helps us keep within the boundaries. So write your boundaries down and share them with others and decide I'm going to stick with this. Hey, if you're enjoying this content and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified the next time I upload a video. Okay, number three, and, and this is really the big one. This is the most important one. This is, this is why I created this video, to be perfectly honest with you. See, early on in my career, I was working uh, as a freelancer for my brother, building a web application, and that was many, many moons ago. Um, but a lot of times, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was learning a lot as I was going, and, and so I would spend a lot of my day, you know, digging through documentation and and sometimes not really even working when I should have been working. And, uh, and he would create these deadlines. And so oftentimes I would get to a deadline and I would end up staying up all night long to try to finish these little pieces of the application so that I could present them to my brother so that he could say, good job. And I don't know that he ever actually said good job, but, uh, but that's the, that's the last silent killer of dreams. And that is unhealthy habits. See, being a developer kind of automatically comes with some unhealthy habits. And unfortunately, if you're not a healthy person to begin with, if you don't already have some good habits in place, then you're going to very quickly and very easily slip into a lot of bad habits. The first one is posture. Um, I, I probably don't do a very good job on these videos, but I, I'm trying to do better uh, at, at sitting up a little straighter, a little taller, uh, just to try to help my own posture because I spent a lot of my day like this, hunched over, looking at uh, looking at my computer, uh, maybe kind of leaning back and looking at the at the monitor or something like that. I don't have a lot of good posture sitting here. Now I have a pretty decent chair, which is helpful, uh, but I don't really have great posture, and I haven't had for the last fifteen plus years in this job. So if you're not careful, you can develop bad posture and unhealthy posture for your body, and that can really hurt you in the long run with arthritis and all kinds of other issues. You're just being stooped over all the time. Uh, it's bad for your muscles. It's bad for your skeleton. It's bad for a lot of things. So bad posture could be an unhealthy habit that you don't realize you're doing, but it will kill your dreams because it will hurt you physically. Another bad habit is lack of physical activity. And again, guilty, right? I am not a huge fan of going outside. I'm not a huge fan of physical exercise. Um, and that's why I'm overweight because I don't spend the time doing it. So I need to spend time getting out there and being physically active, even if it's just getting up and walking around a little bit here and there, going up and down the stairs a few times. I, I don't do that. I spend most of my day just sitting here in the chair. And that's something that we don't really think about, but it's a silent killer of our dream because it's it's hurting our health if we're just sitting down all the time. Then, of course, there's poor nutrition. I don't know how many movies I have seen where a developer, a programmer, a hacker, or somebody like that is on the TV screen and they're and they have like a food of choice and it's something like hot pockets or pop tarts or energy drinks, right? How many of us are addicted to energy drinks or coffee or something like that? Not that all those things are bad, but if we tend to take that in most of the time. That's not going to be good for our health. That's one of the reasons why I'm overweight. I don't exercise and I eat a bunch of junk. But probably one of the worst things that we tend to do for ourselves physically is not get the sleep that we need. If you're like me, you've probably spent many, many nights up very, very late, way past midnight, maybe even pulling a lot of all-nighters. And you know when you do that, you're basically worthless the next day. Every time I would do that with my brother, I would be 
I would get nothing done once I kind of showed him what it was that I had accomplished the night before. I was I was useless the next day. And and so doing not getting the sleep that we need really doesn't help us in the long run. It just makes us more tired. It makes us it hurts our bodies physically. It keeps us from being the developers that we can be. It's it truly is a silent killer of our dream. But all of these things even work together in one greater issue, and that is stress. We have to remember all the work and the effort that we're putting in is creating a ton of stress on our minds, on our bodies, even physically. We feel the stress. We feel the pain and the hurt of sitting here and pouring over this issue over and over and over again, trying to figure it out. We've got to think about the mental toll, the stress that is affecting our body, because I cannot tell you how many devs I know of who have had to take time off because of mental stress and fatigue due to stress. And that even affects you guys as junior developers, as you're learning, as you're growing. It's almost worse because you feel like you absolutely have to do it in order to get to where you want to be. And that's the lie. That's the silent killer of your dreams. It's saying you've got to keep going when in reality, what you really need to do is take a break, get a nap, get a good night's sleep, get two or three good nights sleep. You've got to get rest because what good is success if your body is too broken down to enjoy it? So how do we fix this? Well, first of all, I would always recommend to start with getting sleep. To me, that's the number one key. Yes, you need to, you need to have better eating habits. You need to exercise. I'm not good at those things, but the one thing that helps me with the stress the one thing that helps me with all the other things that 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 I have problems with physically is sleep. If I get a good amount of sleep, I don't have to have, you know, 10 hours of sleep. If I get about 6 to 7 hours of sleep, I'm generally pretty refreshed for the next day. So for me, the number one thing is getting a good night's sleep. And then of course, work on your eating, work on your exercise, work on taking breaks so that you can de-stress, you know, I don't know. Maybe that looks like yoga or something. I don't know. <laughs> whatever that, whatever works for you, get some time to, to just get away from the computer, get away from the stress of the job and just relax. Think about something else, do something else. Hey, if you're looking for a great community to interact with me and others on a regular basis, check out the discord server link below in the description of this video. As you may have already figured out, I'm definitely going to be spending some time trying to make myself physically better uh, this coming year in 2024. We'll talk about that and answer a lot of your questions on our February live stream on February 19th at 7 p.m. That's a Monday, 7 p.m. Central United States time. So check out this link here that'll take you to the live stream that's upcoming on February 19th so that you can set a reminder for yourself to join me live. Thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you on the next one.